The bank rate has not stopped going up since late 2021. Property prices have risen massively over the last couple of years. Yield versus mortgage rates are so closely aligned that it just seems like there's no money left for buy to let landlords. But the housing market has turned. Halifax, Nationwide and Land Registry are all showing house prices are falling and have done so since September 2022. Rents by private landlords have seen the fastest rise since records began over seven years ago. Lenders are competing to lend again and are coming back to the marketplace with better competitive mortgage rates for buy-to-let investors. So that's why it's important that we discuss whether buy-to-let investors can actually make any money in today's market. Which areas in the UK are performing the best right now for buy-to-let investors and homeowners alike? And which areas are seeing rents rise the fastest? And why you should probably focus on these areas if you want to be a buy-to-let investor. Hi, my name is Stephen Duncan, and I think it's worth that we check first on which areas are performing best for buy-to-let investors. So here I like to look at the property data website. It's a, it's a paid tool, but it's relatively cheap and it gives you quite good insights into different things about property in the UK. And one of the features it's got on it is rental yield hotspots. And you can just go and click on this and you can just see the rental yield hotspots straight away. When we look at the list, we can see that it's sorted by the average yield being the highest at the top. So we can see which postcodes are showing the highest yield, which region those are in, what is the actual average yield? What's the average price in that postcode? And what's the average price per square foot? And what's like the three year forecast potential for that area? And you can also go and deeper dive and view what that data is and understand exactly which area it is. And you can produce more data from that and look at exactly what properties are available for sale in that particular marketplace. But we're just gonna have a quick look at the yields here in the areas. So, for example, BD1, if I just click on that one to view the data, to understand what exactly that is, that's Bradford. And then there's another one, North East L52, 11%. We'll just click on that quickly just to understand which, which area that is. And that's Leeds. And then we've got S Mid Midlands, NG7, which I know is Nottingham, 192 grand. So, what this gives you is a quick snapshot of like, based on your budget, how much you can afford, what's the average price in that area. You could quickly go, okay, I want properties that are gonna give me at least a 7% yield. And then what's my budget? Say it's 200 grand, then look at properties where the average price is under 200 grand and the yield's above seven. You can quickly just deep dive into them. And this is what property data enables you to do quite quickly and easily, saves you a lot of time. On top of property data, there's also another website that I'd like to go and check out for regions, and that is HomeTrack. Now, HomeTrack have a list of 20 main cities. This is quite interesting because it gives you a 12-month view of how well property prices have performed in these particular cities. And you can sort this and look at it based on average price and things like that, but I'm gonna sort it by which one's performed the best in the last 12 months. Interestingly, it's showing us Nottingham, Manchester, and Birmingham as the top three. They've all performed with an over 9% return over the last 12 months. So this data runs till December 2022. So it's the whole of 2022 data that this is actually working from. And what's quite interesting is that you'll see that London is right down the bottom there, as it's been one of the worst performing cities over the last 12 months. And you know, it's just risen 4.3% compared to all the other cities that have been doing better than it. The only other cities that have performed worse than that are Edinburgh and Aberdeen. And interestingly, the one above that is Glasgow. So the Scottish cities typically perform worse than the English or the Welsh cities. And London's right down there in the mix with the Scottish cities. <laughs> the flight to rural and coastal areas is now starting to shift back to towns and cities in urban areas according to Zoopla. Zoopla is also reporting that some of the major cities such as Bradford, Coventry, Crewe, Milton Keynes and Southend are reporting above average demand for these particular cities. And that's because all of these areas have got their own employment base and have got good transport links that have also connections to larger employment bases such as London, Leeds, 
Manchester and Birmingham. Based on this data, Zoopla is expecting that these types of urban areas are going to perform better than the rural areas in 2023. Which does kind of make sense now because COVID is a bit of a distant memory. People are now going back to their jobs in the offices, into cities, and at the end of the day, people want to be close to where they have to work because no one likes a long commute. Talking to agents on the ground, they're telling me that there's a good demand for properties that are slightly smaller now. Good afternoon, Chairman Bradshaw, speak up now. Hi, you got a property up for sale in Great Meadow for £180,000. Three beds. That's correct, sir, yeah. So there is a demand for two and three bedrooms. The larger ones, not so much, because the cost of living crisis, as we know, the cost of water, rent, heat, and all the rest of it. Exactly. People are worried about the cost of living and the energy prices, and therefore the demand for two bed houses and flats are gonna be increasing, especially in urban areas where there's good opportunity for amenities and local services and that are close to jobs and transport links. So that could be a factor if you're looking at what type of properties to go for. buy to let mortgages took a bit of a battering in the last quarter of last year, but now lenders are coming back to the marketplace and they're looking to compete and they're looking to offer better priced buy to let mortgage rates. And lenders such as the Mortgage Works have even just recently dropped their mortgage rates on a fixed rate buy to let mortgage as much as 50 basis points. And they've got mortgages, buy to let mortgages available for 65% loan to value that are under 4% fixed rate now for two years, 3.99. So there's good rates out there, depending on what loan to value you're after, you can potentially get good fixed rates right now. But saying that, I'd probably look at getting a discounted tracker for the next two years because rates are gonna go up and they're gonna come back down again. And um, I think in the next 12 to 24 months, rates will start to drop. So mortgage rates were a big concern for everyone, especially in the buy to let investor community world because it looked like there wasn't a way that you could make properties cash flow anymore if the rates kept going up and up and up and rents just stayed the same. But interestingly, what we've seen is the, the lenders have come back with more competitive rates and rents have started to rise. So let's now talk about what we're seeing with the rents. There's still a massive imbalance between supply and demand in the rental market. So according to HomeTrack, rental inquiries are up 46% above the five-year average and the stock of homes available for rent are below 38% of the five-year average. Rents are rising the fastest in the major cities and London's leading the way with a 17% rise or £273 per month increase in rents over the last 12 months. Home Tracking Index is recording above average rental increases in the other major cities, such as Manchester at 15.6%, Birmingham at 12.3%, and Sheffield at 12.4%. So these major cities are seeing that demand is outstripping supply in the last 12 months, and this could be led by that they're major employment centers and they've got large amounts of student population. This is only ever gonna change if we start to see supply improve, so more investors buying properties and putting them up for rent, or if demand starts to weak, less people look for rented accommodation. So one of the biggest problems with this whole supply demand issue when it comes to rent is that there's a structural problem <laughs> literally in the actual private rented sector because the private rented sector hasn't grown since 2016. It's got stuck at around 5 million properties available for rent. Over the last seven years, it's seen that private landlords have started to look at their portfolio and decide it's not worth the hassle of keeping them because it's come about because of higher taxes imposed upon them or there's been greater regulation imposed on them. So they're selling properties that may not have suited what they wanted. With the high sales market that we've had at the moment, people are selling their properties and cashing in on the fact that the housing market has gone up quite considerably in a short amount of time. So this leads to problems with supply and demand in the private rented sector, and therefore there's just not enough supply of private houses to be rented for private renters. But when it comes to property prices, the key that's driving that is affordability. And this is being backed up by the data that Zoopla's looking at, and they're seeing that properties 
in more affordable areas have seen the biggest price growth and those in areas that are less affordable such as London have seen the least amount of price growth. And that's why it kind of seems that price falls in these more affordable areas are gonna be less likely to happen. They're gonna be less impacted because things are still gonna be more affordable to get a mortgage in those areas and also the price of the property is more affordable. So those areas are less likely to see big price falls compared to the areas that are least affordable, such as London. So it'll be interesting to watch that space as we play out 2023. Based on this information, how can you make some money as a buy-to-let investor? So with this information, I'll be looking to buy a buy-to-let property in the more affordable areas. These areas are gonna be less impacted by the price falls that we probably will see across the board in 2023. But as a percentage, it will be less in those more affordable areas than say in the least affordable areas like in London. So I'll be taking a good look at these major towns and cities like Bradford, Swindon, Coventry and Crewe, and Milton Keynes and Southend. And because they're close to major transport links as well and jobs, these areas could perform quite well in 2023 and beyond. Look at properties that are slightly smaller, look at a two bed house, look at flats, even masonettes. I don't necessarily always like leasehold properties. I tend to go more for freehold, but if the demand is there and you're looking just to make positive cash flow and you can make a better cash flow on smaller properties and there's more demand because people are concerned about cost of living and energy prices, which definitely will play out in 2023 and maybe into 2024, those smaller properties are gonna do well for tenants. The other big thing is that the rental prices in these areas are going up by more than 10% per year. So if you get a good mortgage rate and the rent is increasing and you can keep increasing the rent every 12 months or set a great rate from the start, you know, you're gonna be making a good positive cash flow property with a good investment as long as you buy the property at the right price to begin with. So I'll be looking to lock in a discounted tracker maybe on a mortgage rate or get a good fixed rate for a small amount of time, maybe two or three years. Bank of England have said that the bank rate's gonna go up in the short term, but then come back down again. It may be that it comes back down again by the end of 2023, but probably definitely into 2024. So it's just how much do you hedge that? But this goes to track is probably a favorable way of how to cope with that at the moment. And your reward is then gonna be that you'll get a good positive cash flow property that's gonna hold up to house price pressures and be in good rental demand over the next five years. So vanilla buy to lets, there is still a way to make money with vanilla buy to lets, I do believe. If you can lock in a good mortgage rate, and buying an area where rents are increasing, I don't see why you can't make money in 2023 and beyond with just a simple, easy, low risk vanilla buy to let. House prices may take a wobble over the next 12 to 36 months, but like all good things, the economic clock ticks around again, and before we know it, house prices will start to rise again. And you'll kick yourself if you don't get on the market when there's an opportunity to secure properties at a good price. Make sure you make plenty of offers, buy below asking price, locking a good price from day one. If you're not making offers, you're not making money. You wanna be making lots of offers to secure that great deal. So if you'd like to help and support this channel, if you get some value from these videos, I recommend joining the membership. It's like the price of a cup of coffee and it'll keep me motivated to keep doing lots of these videos. Thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.